We're ready? All right. And I call this regular meeting of the Luray Town Council to order. Will you please stand and join me for a moment of silence? Mm -hmm. Last Councilman Sowers to join us to lead us in our pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice crowd tonight. Did something happen nobody told me about? <laughs> uh, we have some special guests this evening. They're, uh, they're working, protecting us. Um, Chief Cook, would you like to introduce your officers, please? Yes, sir. Several council members approach me over the time that we have some new ones on, on the council. Um, over time, want to know, don't know some of the officers are maybe retired new ones, but the staff here I have, I've had for a pretty good while now. We'll be retained for a while. Uh, first, I'm Lieutenant Foster. He's uh, 18 years. Uh, he's a patrol lieutenant. Um, I have Sergeant Dolph Meyer. He's uh, six years. Seven years, sorry. Seven years. <laughs> oh, both of these are all their whole entire career with Blue Ray Police Department. Uh, and I have Patrolman Dustin Painter. He's on his fourth year. Correct. And Officer Patrolman Bree Good, and she is on her fourth year. Or right at four years. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then. Uh, Henson, he's our canine officer with Canine Boone. Uh, Henson is uh, Henson came to us from Front Royal. Uh, he, he's been here for three years, but he's got a total of four and a half years, and Boone's about a year and a half. So, um, if you have any questions you want to ask him, uh, feel free. But I just want to kind of introduce him. Hopefully, next council meeting I'll have the other shift in. Two of them are on the way back from Poplar Springs. They have to do transport, so they're probably not going to make it. But that was Officer uh, J. Roy and Detective Smith. And Jerry Roy has 20 years experience, and Detective Smoot is on his 26th year for front row. So, but they've been going all day. Chief, thank you. Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, ladies, we thank you all for what you do. We know you have a tough job and, of course, a dangerous job, and we uh, certainly appreciate it. Thank you for everything. Council, anybody want to add anything? I think I saw Officer... Painter pulled somebody over right before we came in. That's right. Well, we got to get them back out there. But thank, again, thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, and again, please be careful. <laughs> yeah, you all may leave. Right, stay for the meeting. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I'm sorry, Danielle. I guess we should call the roll. Sounds good. Please. <laughs> Mayor Dockmeyer. Here. Mr. Becker. Here. Lower. Here. Mr. White? Here. Mr. Pettit? Here. Mr. Sowers? Here. Mr. Webb? Here. Okay. Do we have any additions to or deletions from the agenda? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, move that Town Council add agenda item 8L, Code Amendment Chapter 2 54, Order of Business to the agenda. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, Danielle? Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lower? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Goodness. All right. Can we go ahead and approve? Uh, Jason, can we go ahead and approve this? Uh, probably should wait for it to come up in the regular order of business. Okay. If there's right. a desire to have that added tonight and another motion to be made to do so. Oh, my apologies. Yes. I, I further move that we add a uh, uh, council comment period following the citizen comment period. Second. Discussion? Daniel? Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lillard? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Pennant? Yes. Mr. Sowers? Yes. Consent agenda. Mr. Vickers? I get to do it every, uh, every, every time. Every time. Yeah, you're so good. Right? I move that uh, we approve the following consent agenda. Uh, the minutes of the regular council meeting on January 9th, 2023. The minutes of the special session meeting, January 9th, 2023. The minutes of the work session, uh, January 24th, 2023. And accounts payable totaling $212,656.73. Second. Discussion? Danielle? Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lillard? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. <clears throat> All right, general citizen comments, and we've changed our format a little bit in the past. 
citizen comments, citizens spoke for three minutes. We did not engage in agenda conversation, dialogue with them. Uh, what we've done just a few minutes ago, after all the citizens have commented, if council has questions, discussion, and we can do it at that point. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Joe Fudge. Good evening. Uh, I was talking with Mr. Vickers at another, uh, I guess, uh, meeting, and uh, he invited me here tonight to give you an update on Arise. Uh, first of all, we have changed our mission plan. Uh, to describe what we do, uh, we are no longer a day shelter. We stopped that two and a half years ago when I took over. And uh, right now, we are a uh, homeless outreach center. So uh, that's a better description. And I believe everyone has a copy of our, my year-end report to the board. I, I wanted to uh, make you aware of some key facts that Mr. Vickers was very impressed with. And uh, just the number of meals that we served last year, 8,341 meals. Uh, we started off very slow uh, last uh, January and February, and uh, we're approximately running at 200% that number uh, to date right now this, this month. So we're going to be well over 10,000 meals. Uh, these are meals that are served to people that live in Luray and outside of Luray in Page County. And that's approximately uh, 70 to 80 meals a day. And that's, we're open three days a week. And that, act, that figure of 72 cents per meal is extremely accurate. We are uh, trying to keep uh, a number on what we do. Uh, we receive a whole lot of food from people that uh, think that we're doing a good job. And we have volunteers, nothing 100% volunteer, including myself. And uh, we, uh, any money that is donated to us goes right into helping. We have two major programs that we help with. One is emergency housing. When people, families come to us and they're in distress, uh, I can put them up in a motel for three nights, and that affords them the opportunity to get a good night's sleep. Then the next day we can work on, hopefully, a plan for their recovery. Sometimes that involves uh, counseling for drug and alcohol. Sometimes it's job uh, hunting, which I can help do online. Uh, sometimes it's uh, just giving an ear to someone who is in need. Um, these are your neighbors that we're helping. These aren't people from out of town. And I have figures to back that up. Um, I track every person that comes in, every family that comes in. You'll see on our, the bottom of the sheet, 141 families. Well, you can magnify that or times that by three to get a little better accurate uh, number of the exact people that walk through our door. Um, you can see just above that, 35 families receive telephones. Now, when they qualify for SNAP, it's a simple thing of going online and putting an application for a free government phone. Why is that important? Well, if they don't have a phone, they can't get any kind of communications through social services which means they will be dropped from the rolls after a period of time because they have no contact. So, of course, everyone thinks, you know, why would a homeless pe person need a phone? Well, for any kind of services, it's mandatory. So that's why that's important. Last year, out of the 141 families, we had 32 that were evicted. Uh, you can see above that gas cards and the number of power and water bills that we paid for our, fee for our uh, clients to keep them in their housing. So we do that too. We uh, try to find out 
exactly what they need, and we try to help them. Um, I think that uh, uh, there's always been a misconception of what we do. When I took over, um, my name is Joe Fudge. I'm the vice president and also operations manager of Arise. So I'm doing two different things at once and then a bunch of others. But every person that comes in goes through me. I, I do sit down and do an intake report, find out who they are and what they need, and I try to put them on that road to recovery. Um, one little success story I'll leave you with because I'm getting close to the end of my time here. Uh, a young man came in with his wife and two, excuse me, three young children. And uh, the kids were hungry. All they had had for a night and a half was potato chips. So we sat down and we made them food. And that three-year-old and the five-year-old and nine-year-old ate that food faster than we ever imagined. So we gave them another meal. Meanwhile, meanwhile, inside the office, I'm talking to the father, finding out what his expertise were. What, what did he get laid off from? What kind of job? He was a tree cutter. And he was the guy that goes up in the top. And the company that he was with since he was 14 just went out of business. No notice. So he got ejected from where he was living. He had no more money. He put in applications. And so we were sitting there talking. And I looked out the window, and I saw a tree cutting company drive by and pull into the lot next to ours into Wayne's Auto Reconditioning Service. And I jumped up, grabbed him. We ran out, talked to that guy. And he said, yeah, I'll give you a job. I need, I need somebody like you right now. And so he, he literally got a job, and the gentleman that hired him gave him a place to live till he had a couple of paychecks under his belt. Now, how many times has that happened since I've been doing this for almost four years? Twice. Now, what we really need is a staff of people to work as uh, uh, a li liaison for jobs. Now, uh, Chief and I had a discussion about that a little while ago. And what, what does it take to keep people from being homeless? And that is jobs. And uh, jobs that, number one, they have transportation to. And that's the biggest problem. Most of the people that we deliver meals to have no transportation. So it's uh, uh, vital that the town, the county, the state, someone to help us come up with transportation back and forth to major employers. And I think that would be a godsend for a lot of these folks. And uh, I hope this generates some questions from you, because I'll be here during that period. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Fudge. Yes, you have a seat, and after we get through the citizen comments, if there, the council has any discussion, questions for you, we'll, we'll go through it. Um, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Earl Brunson. Mr. Brunson, would you like to speak, sir? Thanks. Oh, let's see. I just have a few kind of desires and maybe concerns. Um, <clears throat> I've actually spoken to Mr. White about this a number of months ago, but since then I've kind of come up with a different idea toward it. I've sp spoken here before about it, but I think we could do something different on it if we decide to do it. Lights for the Greenway. We could get solar, high intensity solar lights on the Greenway, both sides of the path, ground mounted with glass cover so they won't get crazed for easy service and mowing, 60 feet apart probably, and they should maybe just be from Mechanic Street to the bridge at the south end of the Greenway in that one long area, I think would be sufficient. Um, might even want to post a sign, be advisable not to carry valuables with you on the Greenway. Um, that could be a possibility. I think it would add, would add to the beauty of Luray. Um, 
I, for one, would use it at night because I need it. <laughs> and um, the second thing I'd like to address is in the past, Ruffner Plaza, we had nice porch swings out there by the plaza on those wood stands. Now, if there's a concern about the chains not being good enough, we just put better chains on them, better screws, to where there's no way they could break. Um, that was kind of a nice thing. You'd be walking down the path with a goal of getting to that darn swing. <laughs> okay. Now, the third issue I would like to discuss, because I ran to a, into a brick wall on this, just as sure as the wall that should have a door in it. My church is Forward for Christ Baptist Church down past the fairgram. We're busting at the seams on Sunday. We only have one exit door up front by the altar on the right. They're getting ready to do some construction work within the church. I would like to see another door on the left side of the front of that church for two reasons, fire code reasons, and also in case some other emergency comes through that back door. I would feel a lot better and safer if we had another exit door up front. And those are basically my three concerns. I have them written down here. Can I just hand them to him? Okay. All right, Mr. Brunson, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And have a seat. Uh, does anybody else want to speak tonight? Okay, Council. Anybody have a question? Thoughts? I think for I Mr. Question, I'll I go ahead. I don't remember why the port swings came down. Was it just getting wore out? Condition of the overhang. That's why the Greenway is in the process of taking donations to uh, replace that facility. Okay, was that something we talked about? Shade or awnings as well, opposed that's, that's to That's the swing? ultimate goal is to put in shades, but yes, sir, the, the, the cupola structure there uh, has degraded to the point that leaving the the swings was not considered. So you had to replace the whole thing if you want to keep the swings. Yes. Okay. All right. That's okay. Thank you. You had a question for uh, Mr. Fudge or just a request. Uh, you mentioned that you have data as far as county residents that you're servicing. Would you either be able to provide that uh, via email to town manager or mayor or something like that? I'd, I'd be very interested to see some of that. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate it. Happy to do that. And do you have, do you keep things like uh, how long they've been in the community or that? I can only think of two people last year that had moved back. Everyone has stayed in Page County their entire lives. Really? Okay. Really. Yeah. Thank you. Council, anybody else? Right. Well, thank you both for being here this evening. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I just wanted to say, and I don't know if this is out of order given our limitation on asking questions, but maybe it can be phrased as a question, which is, Mr. Brunson, have you gotten to talk to the Greenway Foundation, of which there are many members here tonight? Uh, it just kind of worked out really well. So I, if you all are able to exchange information or connect, it would probably go somewhere. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right, Council, anybody else? Ron? I guess I'm a little bit confused or I don't know enough about the difference in page one and arise when it comes to helping people that are uh, homeless or hungry or whatever I mean do you have the same mission I guess that's my question well uh, arise was formed out of uh, what page one does uh, and because they felt at the time that there was not enough uh, attention paid to homeless people now as far as feeding goes we are the only ones that deliver cooked food and they deliver a whole lot of fresh as well as frozen foods and canned foods for people that need it on a monthly basis. So that's one big uh, uh, difference. The other difference would be uh, as far as our counseling. We spend more time on, uh, we, we, we definitely have some of the same services, but we specialize in that one area where they don't, they do a lot of different things. And I think uh, a person is here from uh, page one. If you'd like to address that? Um, not at this time. All right, 
Anybody else? The only other question slash comment, this one from Mr. Fudge. I'd be curious to know the status of you all, like grant writing or applying for grants, because, and even this is on the agenda tonight for the rec, when you do apply for a grant, we can furnish a letter from the town, the mayor, the council, or some combination thereof that can, uh, you know, help to legitimize and give the town's perspective on the service that you offer. So I'd keep that in mind. We uh, tried to employ a grant writer uh, a couple of years ago when things were so bleak. And uh, because we have no paid employees or staff, it severely limits the, the grants. All of the grants that we have qualified for, I have applied for and gotten. So, uh, and there's only two. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Presentations. People Inc. Blue Ray Meadows Update, Mr. Brian Phipps. Thank you, Mayor Dolphmeyer. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Good to see you, members of council. Uh, I'm Brian Phipps, the president and CEO for People Incorporated of Virginia. People Inc. is a community action agency that has worked in Page County now since 2009. And I'm here tonight uh, for the main purpose of extending our thanks to the, the town of Luray and their staff for your assistance and support for our Luray Meadows project out on Airport Road. Um, yeah, you know, I know that many of you are relatively new to the council, but we started this process approximately 10 years ago, you know, looking at doing an affordable housing project in Page County. And with the town's assistance, applied for a community development block grant um, on from the town of Luray, with People Inc. being the, the primary beneficiary for those funds and was awarded $700,000 to support the development of those affordable housing units. Uh, fast forward uh, three years uh, to where we are today, and I'm pleased to report that in December of this year, we reached full occupancy at our LeRae Meadows project in off of Airport Road. Um, to be totally honest, one of the things that we were a little concerned about, especially as you develop affordable housing in rural communities, is if you build it, will anybody come? And what we found in looking at our projections that it's not uncommon for affordable housing projects to take up to, to up to 12 months to fill up. Um, uh, that that's just typical within the industry. What we found when we made those uh, apartment units available to Page County residents primarily, it filled up in three months. Um, you know, this was a 13.6 million dollar project that um, actually won a governor's housing award this past fall for the best rural housing development in the state of Virginia. Uh, we could not have done that without the support of the town council, certainly to uh, approve the rezoning of the piece of property where, where those units are built, um, but also to agree to apply for additional funding to help support that project. And I want to commend uh, town Manager Burke, as well as Assistant Town Manager uh, Mr. Chrisman, uh, for their assistance through that process. Uh, we are very pleased uh, with the outcome of that project. And uh, what I shared with you all tonight is our most recent annual report that will provide some additional information about People Inc. and the services that we provide throughout the Commonwealth. I think if you have an opportunity to take a look at that document, you will see that there is a uh, uh, a feature story on a, on our first resident in Lorraine Meadows, a uh, young lady that came to us that is actually working in a, a local daycare center that was one of the first, if not the first, resident to move into that property. So I, I, I come with nothing more than to say thank you and to uh, certainly encourage um, you all to think more about the, the extent of the housing needs. I think Mr. Fudge aptly represented a minute ago uh, the extent of the homelessness issues that all of us are dealing with. Um, I was encouraged by his presentation. I actually gave him my card so that we can talk more about that. Uh, People Inc., while we provide you know services throughout the Commonwealth, you know, Page County is one community that we call home and ours, and we are certainly willing to do whatever we can to help Page County as, and its residents. So uh, thank you very much on behalf of People Inc. and our board, and um, we look forward to the next project. Thank you so much. We certainly appreciate you coming tonight, and we thank you for being in Lou Ray, adding what, 52? Was that what we 52 units, 52 yes, sir. Units of affordable housing is, is huge for our, 
our town. I think it, you know, by our estimation, it was the first new project in 25 years. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been very encouraged by uh, the response that we've gotten from the community. I think if you haven't had the opportunity to take a tour, um, you don't want to go out there and yell at me. We'll go and we'll take a ride and, and meet some of the folks out there. It, it, it's it, it's really a, a very nice development. Yes, sir, Mr. Pickers. Uh, 52, it'd be like at least 100 people. Right? Yeah, a absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and, and in addition to that, I think it's worth mentioning that we created two additional jobs in the community by doing that. We have a local property manager that is uh, working with us to manage the property as well as a maintenance supervisor that's living on site. So. Uh, it, it really was an instance where we were able to develop something very nice uh, in the community, and, and that's not just us saying it. You know, we don't we don't do these things for awards necessarily, but I think that it's telling that the work that we did there can be recognized on a state level for being an example of what needs to happen in rural communities to help begin to address the affordable housing issues that we're all we're all facing. They're very attractive units. I have to say, they exceeded my expectations. They really did. One other question for you. You mentioned it can take 12 months to mm -hmm. fill up. If there's such a need, why is it? Is it just a, a very strict criteria? Or uh, is it a long there are or? there are income eligibility criteria associated with it. Uh -huh. um, you know, and frankly, I think that that's indicative of the community and where it's at. You know, in communities where there is a, a greater availability of affordable housing, there's more competition. And I think what we found here is that there is a lot of pent up demand for those housing units, not only for um, lower income individuals, but you know, for folks that are working and going to work every day. I think that's one of the misnomers that we see is that many of the residents of Page County are eligible to live in that property. So I think being able to advocate and educate folks about what this really is and what we're trying to bring to those communities makes a huge difference in what we're able to do. And what we really try to do with the Loray Meadows property was show that affordable housing does not need to look like that's where poor people live. We very much try to guard against that. We want it to be a place that the community can be um, pleased with and, and proud of and where folks want to live there. And I think we found that as we opened it up to the community and uh, continue to you know, have a very strong waiting list for uh, new additional units within the community. Is this project similar to Rugby Square? Is it the same idea, affordable housing? It, it, it is the same deal, the, the same, um, the same type of project I'm not exactly familiar with rugby square um, but this project itself is uh, targeted to households that earn 60% or 50% of the area median income um, it was developed using a, a variety of tax credit incentives you know the community development block grant a lot of public financing sources that are really intended uh, to make qu high quality uh, housing available to um, residents no matter their incomes and that's really what we focused on how much of the equity in it is uh, the tax credit roughly 70 percent 70 80 percent depending on the um, depending on the uh, attributes of the specific programs but you know frankly without the benefit and the council's support we would not have been able to do that project um, yeah, being able to address a lot of the infrastructure needs. I know that uh, we worked closely with Mr. Christman um, early on about getting a pump station out there and some other um, needed infrastructure that were really key to making the project work. And we needed some additional help to do that. You know, you know, frankly, our interest is in ensuring that those units are affordable uh, to folks with lower incomes and bringing in public grants and other sources of financing are key to being able to do that. So uh, the council really stepped up not only through the rezoning process, uh, but also in you know, believing in us enough to move forward and applying for those grant funds on our behalf. So we are very uh, thankful and appreciative of that relationship. Well, thank you again. Th appreciate thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate you being here tonight. You're we appreciate you being in Blue Ray. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Greenway Foundation, Yeager Spring Greenway Extension Update. Mr. Bill Dudley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, member of, members of council. It's nice to be back with you again. Um, your Greenway Foundation uh, is pleased to be here, and you're going to hear from several of us this evening, and we're going to try to make this just as quick as we possibly can. Uh, I'm kind of the front guy on this. Uh, your foundation meets uh, the fourth Thursday of each uh, month at my uh, real estate office. Um, you've got a bunch of enthusiastic volunteers on the Greenway Foundation. I serve as president. Uh, Jim Davis is vice president. Jim couldn't be here tonight. Gladys uh, McNamara, who you're going to hear from in just a minute, is our secretary. 
uh, Margaret Stevenson is our treasurer, and um, Ken Beyer is on our board, and we fondly call Ken the father of the Greenway. Uh, his wisdom and knowledge is uh, just fantastic, and he's helped to develop the Greenway and led the charge. Also on the board is uh, Chris Kennedy. Chris couldn't be here this evening. Uh, Rod Graves is here from the foundation, and you'll hear from Rod in just a minute as well. <clears throat> um, you, we have a wonderful relationship with your superintendent of Parks and Rec, uh, Jen Jenkins, and also Ryan Covage. Um, the, most of the time, <laughs> most of the time they're able to attend our meetings, and we really appreciate them. Uh, also, a shout out to Eleanor Ames. Eleanor runs the website for us, and uh, I, she's given a lot of time to the foundation. Gladys is going to come forward and present our annual report, followed by Rod, who's going to talk about the expansion and the park concept. Then Berlin from Racy Engineering is going to update you on phase one and plans for phase two. And then we're going to ask you if you want us to move forward with phase two of the expansion. Thank you so much. Hello. It's hard to believe it's been a year since we first came uh, with the idea of the Redwell Isabella expansion at Jaeger Springs. Um, so it's been a busy year. It's hard to believe it's been a year, and other times it feels like it's been a long time. <laughs> but um, we're grateful for the uh, opportunities that have come up this year. Um, in the essence of time, I won't go through. I think you have a copy of the written report, um, so we can just answer questions later if, if you have anything. Um, we did start the Redwell, the expansion for the Greenway in February. We quickly applied for a grant once you all approved us to explore this. We applied for a grant to um, help fund the feasibility study so that we could uh, split that cost 50% uh, with the town. And uh, we received that award. And I will be meeting with uh, Danielle on Thursday and giving her some money. So. Um, the, um, as one of the other gentlemen said, or both the gentlemen said, it's, it's, it's a great partnership that we have with the town, uh, the town office, all the town staff, and certainly the council, and we are appreciative of that. Um, we have recently, uh, let me just say, too, that Summer Williams of Convergence Grants uh, provided pro bono services for a grant for us. She's starting her business. And um, she was enthusiastic about this project, and she provided pro bono services for that grant. We recently worked with her and with um, Ryan and Jen on a T-Mobile hometown grant for revitalization, and that is for the uh, Ruffner Plaza revitalization. We hope to hear uh, if we're going to receive that award uh, by the end of this month or first of next month. We held a thank you for the uh, recreation um, department. We are um, honored to, to work with a dedicated and um, skilled team. Uh, it was headed by Ryan and Jen and then all the team members. So we were grateful for that. We will be seeing when you walk the Greenway, we'll have a plaque down there for a tree that says a public thank you to the Parks and Rec Department. We recently um, held a picnic, and it was the first potluck of its kind for the Greenway, of just passing out flyers as people as we were walking by. 35 people attended and requested that we have one every week. No, <laughs> every month. And so we're looking at possibly doing something every, um, at least twice a year. Um, and that was the brainchild of, a, of one of the local residents who walks the Greenway. She came up with that idea. We have established a Greenway mail, email site before. It's always been um, individual contact information for the board. So to become more professional in our image as we're applying for more grants um, and to have more accessibility to everyone, um, we have our own Greenway site now, our email and uh, phone number. We'll go fast forward down to Section B. 
thanks to the generous generosity of Luray and Page County residents, as well as their visitors and tourists who visit the area, visit the town and, and appreciate the Greenway. We have raised $24,597 this past year. Um, it's worth noting that one of those grants or one of those uh, donations was from a couple that live in Warren County, but are very appreciative um, and excited about the work that we're doing here in Luray. So we've given uh, the donation of $10,000 for the first half of the fiscal year. And our uh, goal is by the end of this fiscal year uh, to be donating $90,000 total. We're looking to start a capital campaign in 2023. Um, we're doing some preliminary work now and uh, that campaign would be focused on the Redwell extension. I'll turn it over now to Rod who will give a little uh, clearer uh, picture of uh, what this historic park will look like. Thank you, Gladys. You're welcome. Members, great to be here. Um, you, you all received uh, a drawing that uh, illustration I did very, very quickly. <laughs> it's not the best that I'm capable of, but anyway, it's it's there and, uh, um, and can illustrate um, what we conceived the park and something I've been dreaming of for a long time that it could be uh, could most definitely change and evolve as things go along that I've found out uh, building building the museum at the caverns and other projects at the caverns things do evolve naturally and uh, that's a that's a good thing to happen but basically this is the concept that uh, that we've all agreed on um, uh, first off I, before I get into it too far I'd, I'd I really want to, uh, for my colleagues and myself, we want to really thank you all for your support of the Greenway Foundation in general. And uh, secondly, this project, it's uh, so so exciting. We were, we're just very, very grateful. Not a lot of towns are this supportive and generous of, of uh, groups like ours. And I think what the Greenway and uh, uh, has done for this community, in my opinion, has been just such a uh, great thing for our health our mental well-being, um, you know, it's just made a better community. And uh, it's an inspiration to, to any, any town in the country, as far as I'm concerned. <coughs> uh, the, the plan is, is to preserve the natural and historic integrity of this core property, uh, which is uh, right where the f blast furnace was and the uh, furnace plantation or uh, community rather that uh, started in 1787 and went to 1841 uh, this will not only preserve this site it will preserve the our hometown identity in some regards where we come from where we're going and this represents both of those things I think it represents also our future um, and what kind of community we are and what we deem is important uh, what is it going to look like? Well, you see the drawing in the drawing that I have of our placards. It also includes um, interpretation uh, devices uh, on on the park uh, that will include social and uh, historic and uh, natural elements of the park. Uh, there's all the above there, so we're really lucky. Some some just have one or or a little bit. But this is just a fantastic uh, uh, site, uh, which could include picnicking. Um, and then you see a split rail fence around the outer perimeter for safety for the general public, which could have a, a black netting in the inside for smaller children to doubly uh, secure that site. Um, there's two bridges that will go across. The first across the Hawksbill Creek. Uh, which Racy Engineering has been uh, diligently been working with, uh, with all of us and uh, and you all as well, uh, and um, uh, we've got uh, a second bridge that goes across uh, uh, the, uh, the well the pond or the mill pond as it was originally, 
uh, and that needs to be rebuilt and made into a weir bridge uh, combination uh, with more sophisticated modern uh, technology to control the the uh, flow of the dam. As you all know, the, there's over eight million gallons of water a day that, that comes out of that uh, spring. Tremendous aquifer, uh, blue hole, some people call them, um, and a major tributary to the Shenandoah River. So it's got a lot of important things going on with it, and you know, a great water, future water resource for the county or, or for the town rather uh, to enjoy uh, as well. Um, I think that that with all this said, the, this this part of it right here is, like I say, the core property. One beyond that, in the far distance, is where the blast furnace was, and there's also the office building, uh, and and there's some other buildings that are not on the property. They're close by that were were definitely associated with it in its earliest histories. So uh, uh, we've had uh, uh, it's tucked away. A lot, not a lot of people realize it's here. Uh, at the end of the evening, after a certain hour, um, I suggested that uh, and I talk with uh, uh, the uh, chief about this. Is that uh, we could have a you know a gate that closes or something that closes a gate at the end of the, every evening to secure that, and then there's no parking on the top part of it. So uh, unless for emergency access, which we're also working on, uh, which uh, Brian Chrisman suggested, which I thought was really really smart, um, but very safe, secure spot. Uh, it's also open to interpretation for the, uh, in the future, we hope, sooner than later with the uh, buildings that are there, uh, the two buildings that the uh, town owns. So anyway, just uh, a little, little illustration for you. I hope there's more to come that are uh, more uh, elaborate than this. If there's any questions for the, count, for the council, I'm happy to answer those. Yes, sir, Mr. Where's Rickers. the big spring? The left, where, where, where the fowl, water fowl are, yeah, to the left, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's the, that's the, um, uh, the, the Hawksbill Creek, and there's a, that actually, the Hawksbill Creek splits right before there and then comes to one, and uh, that runs down to a bigger section of the creek, uh, but uh, it's, uh, you know, a very powerful area, but it's in very bad disrepair right now, um, and, you know, has been most of my life anyway. It's amazing it's held up as well as it has, to be honest with you. But I think the town's taking great care of the property in general. Uh, the, uh, you all have cleared out there and taken care of the uh, buildings. And they are very, very important buildings in my mind uh, to uh, the history of uh, development of industry in the state, on a state level, even nationally speaking. And uh, that's right here in Lorraine. So. Yes, sir. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, th thank you all. Good evening, Council. I'm Berlin Neff of Racing Engineering. Um, I want to keep this real quick and simple. Uh, we have um, uh, Steve. Do you have to have C200 of the planning sheets it's in the package? Um, we've started and have a, that. That will, if you go back, that one will be fine. The color rendering will be fine. Um, oh, the, so, <laughs> and one more page, I think. Here we go. All right, so we've started a preliminary uh, layout. We have an alignment that we feel has as little, um, has reduced the amount of issues that we had. One of the main uh, issues we had starting out is Starting at the left of the page, where it connects, where there's a like a backward C. So the dark line coming out, that is the start of the expansion, and it comes down. It makes a turn to the right, and then a turn to the left to go across the um, Hawksbill Creek. The reason why we had to choose that route is if you took a more direct route, uh, it would there was a conflict elevation-wise with the existing overhead power line. So we've we've found a way around that uh, instead of having to raise the power line um, we we went to where the power line was higher closer to the pole uh, and then we'll have a bridge crossing which we're doing some preliminary work uh, on uh, we will not be able to finalize until we get the results of the 
uh, environmental assessments and the flood uh, study that is also underway. Uh, from there, it will follow at grade. Uh, once it comes down off the approaches, the uh, bridge section will be elevated uh, to allow water flow underneath of it and debris. Um, one thing we are finding, though, the flood elevation is very high in that area, so it will be submerged when it floods. The, the flood waters actually goes all the way across Bulldog Field. So it's there. It's may not even be as deep because it's very flat in that area, but it covers a wide uh, a wide path. So at that point, once it's going down towards Jaeger Spring, it'll follow at grade. Uh, the width of the trail will match the existing trail that's out there, uh, same pavement markings. Uh, and again, when you get, if you look over to the right corner of the page up towards the top, there's a, a large circle hatched area. That is actually the spring area that it's almost a large pond. Uh, where we cross is where the sleuth is existing that will be also updated and a bridge incorporated with it, and then it goes out to the greenway. Um, so again, our structural designs on these bridges, we have preliminaries. However, we are waiting for the flood study and the environmental studies to be completed. Um, again, no outstanding, um, out outstanding issues other than that at this point. Uh, you know, we could find some other stuff once we get the studies back, but we are not anticipating much from that. Okay. And any engineering questions on that? Just make sure I understand. Yes. So this is the back of the loop on the green. Correct, track. yes. So it's a one-way path, it's not another loop. Yeah, there, at the, um, at the Yeager Springs end, there will do some kind of Turn little around. turnaround, uh, you know, there'll be some, like a rod had shown there, there'll be some historical uh, items, maybe some benches and stuff like that there, and then they can make their way back. But it'll it'll just be a turnaround and head back. There's no further expansion Another at this mile? time. What's that? How much distance is it total? Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember, but I think it is uh, maybe, yeah, tw I, think, I think it's, yeah, about half a mile, I would say, by guess, but 1,200 feet. Yeah. It's another mile walk. Yeah, correct. In yes. In addition to the two miles we got. Correct. Yes. Yes. I mean, we unfortunately with space that you have and everything, there's not a way to really do an efficient loop because we are really crossing at the only path that there is. So you can't really put two paths to cross there to uh, make a loop. You mentioned elevation on the bridge. I mean, is it ADA accessible? Oh, yes. Or? Yes. The approaches will be ADA, so there will be fill. Uh, fortunately, what we're finding with what the flood, what we're looking at for the flood zone, we will not be affecting the flood waters enough that we have to do any mitigation. Okay. Yeah. If I understand that right from what you were saying on that bridge, is, is that bridge typically going to be actually a lower elevation to where the water will go over uh, it? You know how the over, overflows used to be designed where... Yeah. The, yes, it, it was meant for the water to travel and debris to go. Correct. Over it. So, it, it, our envision we haven't finalized, but there's a bridge on the other end of the greenway near the railroad tracks right now that crosses at the, I believe the railings are removable. Right when you have a flood, it's going to be something similar to that. Uh, Steve, if you can go another page or two, I think there is a profile that also shows. Uh, yeah, so there it is down at the bottom. Um, and I can't read the elevations on there, and I, I, but I believe we were in the eight to 10 feet up from the water line. But the banks are kind of steep, so we were kind of splitting the difference where we were crossing there. Right. Yes. So I'm trying to envision this. If I walked along through there, I can see the creek the whole time. Uh, once you cross the bridge, yes, it'll be on your right. When you're, of course, it'll be underneath of you when you're crossing the bridge. And when, you, when you're leading up to the bridge, um, you will not see it. Well, I guess you will see it as much. It depends on the vegetation. Uh, I think some of the vegetation may have to be cut back because uh, flood has caused some sediment and stuff to pile up there because it's kind of out of the current greenway area. But once it's managed, yes, you should be able to see uh, the creek either on your left or your right most of the path. This is town property already, right? Correct. So, but we don't have people walking back. And With the exception of is Jaeger Springs, is that that's that's town to, as well. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, it's all town property. Right now, the public doesn't walk up back and forth on it. Correct. That's yes, the there is no path. It is a jungle. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, very pretty. Well, it's the first time 
we will have a historical element mm -hmm. to the to the Greenway, yeah. you know, having that park at the end of it. Yeah. I, th I think we heard something about the uh, Battlefield Foundation or the, uh, some other group that might be interested in this. Can you address that? That's being discussed. Just discussed. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm on the board for the Battlefield Foundation, and uh, we've there's there's uh, grants that they can help the town with through that. Uh, major grants that could help out with that. Okay. Uh, it's a national heritage area, so they can definitely they do that with a lot of communities. Because, you know, each, each, you know, it'd be a good thing there was there was civil war uh, action down there too. Not significant, but um, fairly significant uh, in the upper part of the, the Greenway. Which we could still get funds for, probably as well for that too. But for this specific site, it's uh, uh, yeah, there's there's monies there. Yeah. So, so in in conclusion, uh, Mr. Dudley reminded me here. So this this is getting us into conclusion of the phase one. So the results of these reports, we will be proceeding into phase two if if approved. Um, like I said, we have the, our general alignment, and the results of the report will allow us to move into phase two and get more actual design data instead of just preliminary stuff to lock it in. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else have a question? Thank you very much. Mr. Dudley? Uh, I would want to know is if you want us to continue with phase two, we didn't find any showstoppers in phase one. Council? We need a motion? Um, uh, that's a good question. Should we speak that back? As far as the Battlefield Foundation, I met with you all one time, Ron. I think they're interested not just in the battlefields, but in life in the Shenandoah Valley before and after the yes. Civil War. Is that yes, it really yes, has no? There's nothing in Page County now. Is that correct? No, they, they, they really. I mean, they've done. They've had a presence in every county from Frederick County all the way down to uh, close to Botticott County. And uh, it's. I mean, they've got federal funds. It's a congressionally backed, uh, uh, you know, nonprofit, and we we. We tell the whole picture from the social uh, uh, part of it to the to the military part. Of it. <coughs> Our principle is is battlefield, of course, but all those other other all those <coughs> other are, are important. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all. Unless you all, anybody else have more questions, anybody? All of you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for what you're doing for this project. Uh, it's and we have some new council members. Uh, has everybody been down there? Alex, you said you hadn't been, but everybody else has been there. Okay. Well, we well, I know we it. took a tour of the spring. Do it again. A couple yeah, years back. Yep. That's an amazing thing. Yeah, Mary, if, if you would like me to start with them, I, I can give a tour to any of you all or as a group. Yeah. Happy to do it. I'd love to. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get that together. Sure. All right. Thank you all again. All right, Lou Ray Downtown Initiative, Ms. Elliott. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good to see you this evening. So <clears throat> this past week, I had, to, I had the opportunity to spend three days in Withville, Virginia, at the Virginia Main Street Director's Retreat. It was really, really great. It was well attended. We had 25 directors there. Um, I learned a lot. And about things that I didn't know that now I do know that I can move forward with. But I also learned a lot about what we do right here in the Ray. And it was very flattering at the meet and greet to have directors come up to me and shake my hand and tell me what a beautiful town that I represent. So I think we should be very proud of hearing about the Greenway. That was one of the topics of conversation when I presented about the amenities because I had to do a presentation on why choose Luray. And that was one of our, of course, one of the amenities that we do offer. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to be meeting with Courtney and Ellie from Virginia May State on February 16th, this Thursday. I have completed all of our assessment and impact statement and all that stuff that we had to do. You know, you're in report, Danielle. Again, thank you for all of your help with the numbers. And um, they're going to be coming into town, so we'll be talking about our assessment and then our accreditation for 2023. 
On February 27th, Ma, Chris McNamara is with the Virginia House. It was with Virginia Housing. He's coming to Page County. He's going to be meeting with the county, but he is also going to be meeting with me. The state is doing what they call mixed use grants. Ms. Lillard, you've probably been hearing about this in your department. Um, and so that is something that we're going to be discussing on how we can perhaps utilize some of those mixed use grants here in the town of Luray for some of our um, property owners. There are several grants that, there are, that are out there this year for us to take advantage of, and so I will be further discussing those. I'm actually working with Sarah Levinson on a couple of things right now. The, to follow up on our remote workspace that is still in the works, we're working on that, that is the top of my list. I have reached out to um, the director of the downtown in Stanton because he has a co-work operation that's been up and running now for almost a year. So uh, Greg and I are going to be getting together, I'm going to take a trip up to Stanton and tour their facility, look at what they have to offer. There's also another one that I have been referred to in Harrisonburg that apparently they have been doing this very successfully and it's a different type of model. So I'm going to go look at that as well and look at both models. Then I can bring that back and then sit down, you know, with my person I'm working with to discuss how we implement it in Luray. And then the only other thing is, is that Mardi Gras is February 25th, all day downtown. So shop and dine and all of our businesses and uh, restaurants will be participating in that. And I think other than, oh, and then the other thing is that DHCD, they really are pushing economic development with, uh, with us, with the directors. I mean, this entire retreat focused on economic development for your main street revitalization, you know, being more conscientious of, you know, the mixed use and that type of thing. So I think we're definitely turning a corner where they're wanting us directors to be even to be more aggressive with our recruitment. But they were very pleased to hear of our two new restaurants and the new things that we have happening in Lorraine. Yes, are we? So. Yes. <laughs> Thank you much for doing Jack. Thanks. Any questions for Jack? Is that Peter Dimby you're working with in Stanton? I'm working with Greg. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you know who I mean? Yeah. Okay. Ms. Lois Schaefer, if you'll come forward, please. Yep. Yes, sir. Before asked, Lois Schaefer began her career with Page One of Page County as a volunteer in 1985. And whereas Ms. Schaefer became the Page One thrift store manager in 1988, and whereas Ms. Schaefer became the Page One Director of Operations in 1994, and has continued serving as a director until her retirement, and whereas Ms. Schaefer has assisted thousands of residents with funding for utilities, medical needs, and shelter, and Whereas Ms. Schaefer has managed the distribution of food and other items to those in need in Luray and Page County. Whereas Ms. Schaefer coordinated the donation of untold, unsold items to help fund Page One, Page County. Whereas Ms. Schaefer has always gone above and beyond to find assistance for those in need. And whereas Ms. Schaefer has announced her retirement from Page One of Page County effective December 31, 2022. Now, therefore, it resolved that the mayor and members of the town council of the town of Blu-ray hereby express our sincere appreciation and gratitude for Ms. Schaefer's dedication and commitment to citizens of the town of Blu-ray and Page County. Congratulate her on the occasion of her retirement and wish her the best and continued success in her retirement in future Lois, I don't know what I, what I can add to this. Uh, I've always said there truly are angels among us, and you're one of them. You really Congratulations. Chapter 58-5, Loud, Disturbing, and Unreasonable Noise. Mr. Mayor, Burke. Mayor, I have a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to uh, approve the proclamation. 
I move that the town council approve the proclamation of recognition of Lois Schaefer as presented, extend our thanks to her com continued commitment to the citizens of the town of Luray and Page County and wish her a long and wonderful retirement. Seconded. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm sure there's no discussion, uh, Danielle. <laughs> Ms. Lillard? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Burke? Yes. Now, Mr. Burke. Uh, yes, sir. Council is requested to consider a code amendment uh, to establish Chapter 518 commercial, I'm sorry, uh, to adopt Chapter 585 loud, disturbing, and unreasonable noise. Uh, to specifically address noise issues related to vehicles. The town attorney has taken the opportunity to update this chapter and be consistent with current enabling legislation and enforcement requirements. All right, council, any thoughts? So this is what was presented to us previously. There hasn't been any other changes to it since we last uh, reviewed with it. With the exception that uh, I believe it was Councilman Sowers identified that on the final page, the final sentence, there is a typographical error. Uh, the foregoing shall not preclude the town from pursuing all other instead of over uh, available legal remedies. And the town attorney has, has requested that council uh, in, in your motion uh, to adopt this code amendment as amended with that. And, and that way we can make that change. Anybody else? Um, so as written, does this mean that if someone put a radio right on their property line, as long as it wasn't audible within 50 feet, they could blast it into the neighbor's yard? Just curious. <laughs> I like to poke holes in things. Uh, see. Uh, as I read it, if it's uh, plainly audible over the, the property line, then it would be a violation. Automatically, even though it's not audible within 50 feet? Yes, that's, that's correct. Okay. Yes, sir. May. I mean, just my, my only comment is I'm really hesitant to give us the power to say, hey, you can't warm your vehicle up in your driveway. I understand. I understand it's a nuisance for people, but I'm thinking of someone that came here. They, they purchased a home. They came with the understanding that they could do this, and now they get here, and then, oh, by the way, you have to find another place to park your vehicle. I, I'm really hesitant um, to move forward with this type of thing. If someone has a Harley, are we gonna, you know, they're gonna call up because they're going out for a 5 a.m. ride? Say, hey, you can't warm that thing up here. Take it somewhere else. You know, but I understand, and I've had neighbors with loud yappy dogs that bark in the middle of the night. And it can be a nuisance, but I don't know if it's our place. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna mention that I know where this originated, and actually spoke with the property owner. And she was not alone as far as in the neighborhood of people that had concerns. And I mean, here it, it doesn't stop you from starting your vehicle or warming it up. Uh, I mean, it's 10 minutes ten here, minutes. Is, is what it says. Yeah. But, but we also, I think, need to be really reasonable to know that I don't think neighbors are looking to, to sit there with a stopwatch on a typical vehicle with a normal exhaust, yeah. normal muffler that normally you're not going to hear your neighbor's car running. This yeah. happened to be a road tractor tractor trailer type of truck that if there wasn't a wall there and it was sitting over in front of the ice cream place across it we'd hear it running from probably here you know yeah. if we were simply yeah. outside so it's a it's a different vehicle than just simply a motor vehicle but correct me if i'm wrong chief this is written to sort of cover so commercial and right and if there was a neighbor with a uh accessorized or uh I want to say it's performance type vehicle that mm -hmm. was genuinely loud and they're starting theirs in the morning at 5 8, or this was a situation that the vehicle was running multiple times at night so I understand what you're, I understand completely I don't want us to be so restrictive or get there but I think that we also need to look that law enforcement's hands were almost tied with how do you deal with this type of situation when I, when I run around looking for vehicles that it's basically plain basis that we have something that we can do to the person to say, hey, let's we do have ordinance against this if you can, you know, start a different time. It's not, we're not looking to go out and make charges every vehicle we find running for a period of time. We have, you know, I won't say better things to do, but, but it is something that if we do get a complaint, we can, 
force if the person doesn't comply. So, Bo, you know, I, I have utmost respect for you and your department and absolute confidence and trust, but I don't want to, my fear is I don't want to legislate from that standpoint because that might not always be the case, right? Well, <laughs> not from you. I hope you are, but <laughs> pardon? I'll be yeah, no, I know. Um, I just don't like to enact things that could be, I don't know, overly restrictive or potentially unnecessary. Uh, I prefer neighbors to get along with neighbors and just figure it out amongst themselves. I understand this is a specific case, but um, I'm going to vote no to it. I'm just not comfortable with it. Um, but I, I totally understand, and I totally know if I had that neighbor, I would be probably calling them a dirty rotten so-and-so but Joey are we trying is this to address the noise not the vehicle is that correct yes if I can speak to that right yes if you were you know a few months back when this first originated we had as a council had even had discussion about hey do do we want to not allow tractor trailers or large tractors to remember. park in a residential neighborhood and then we got thinking about it well some things are designed residential and someone might have two three acre plot that's zone residential and if they do drive a truck dump truck road tractor it may not affect anyone around you know we didn't want to reach vehicle specific where people who do have large vehicles and do bring them home for work but they're not disturbing anybody it's not affecting their neighbor they you know they've got some space between it we didn't want to limit that so I believe that's the reason we went towards the noise angle instead of the vehicle specific angle so we weren't banning large commercial trucks from being in our town, which I'm against that. Uh, I'll say that because um, there are plenty of vehicles in town that you know dump truck driver or something brings home, and and they're not a nuisance to their neighbors, or not causing problems, and there's plenty of space that you know they can enjoy to be able to bring it home instead of having to park it outside of town or something. So I wouldn't want to go there, and I do feel that I know what you're saying. Um, Mr. Sowers, and, and, and I see your point completely, don't get me wrong, but I also think that if we go through and look at our entire town code, the officer's discretion and, and, and their ability to use good judgment mm -hmm. is really what a lot of this relies on, and, and not just our town code, but our state, state code. Even code in the state of Virginia, if you were to have an officer that took any of those to the extreme instead of what the true intent was um, of that law or that ordinance, you know, I, I place that trust and judgment of our, I know. Of our law yeah. enforcement. I know. That's, that's just my opinion. And it's not as if we're coming from a, a zero base here. There are already regulations on the books, but. Um, but that's just my view. I'm not trying I know. to change no, it. I'm, no, I'm it, it, it won't, policy. but. <laughs> <laughs> Chief, um, to be clear, you feel that this change enables you to do your job over the existing ordinance that we have on the books now. Correct. That this we is didn't, necessary. We didn't have before. And it's not, I mean, this one particular incident that brought, but we've had it a year, year or two ago to walk over the um, Hudson subdivision, same kind, same thing, same trailer. Uh, I had a guy who started his lawnmower at night and had a run on the property line uh, just to agitate the neighbor. Um, just stuff like that, we can't, we have no enforcement to tell them to throw the off. Uh, now we do, and if they don't comply, which sometimes they do, most of them do, but if they don't, now we have something. That we can so we can enforce if we have to, but most of all our court, our code enforcement uh, violations we go approach the owner, advise them a complaint. We probably get three or four a week different scenarios: trash, clutter in the backyard, tall grass, um, and we work with the, the person saying, "Hey, we don't want to go to court. We would like for you to get this taken care of." And we actually give them a pretty pretty sense amount of time to do it. So very rarely do we actually get to the charge point because it becomes very expensive for the officer to be in court over a civil penalty uh, having an attorney represent. So our ultimate goal is just to get compliance. Anybody else? One other point that I, I find a little bit odd, uh, repairs to public facilities and infrastructure as authorized by the town can violate the ordinance. Um, I know that there could be some road work where that would be necessary, but that, that's primarily for utility. If we have a, a water break in the middle, so an of the emergency night. situation. Yes, okay. sir. Snow removal, things like that. Long I mean, of course, those are going to be late night, yeah. and it's it's noisy. Mm -hmm. You know, or can be noisy. And it's a different thing. Yeah. Well, okay. uh, me bring up something that's way off. If it's bothering your neighbor that bothers people, that makes this come to light. 
What about that fire whistle? We get a lot of complaints about that. That's, that's, that's up to y'all. I know. <laughs> you want to open that? I don't, I, don't, I don't want to mess with that fire whistle. Well, then, that's fine, too. But. <laughs> because it's, it's along the same line of thinking is why I mentioned it. Is Actually, it, that's, that's another specific exemption. Mm -hmm. Fire and theft alarms are exempt on this. Okay. Community. Police and everything else. Fire, yeah. other fire. emergency response. Yeah. Police sirens, any of that responding. It's so it's, it's a matter of trying to get neighbors to get along with other neighbors in the but fairest way possible. Time, unfortunately, we're called. Uh, there's no, there's usually this, it's hard to have neighbors. I mean, nowadays, neighbors usually don't want to work things out between each other. It gets heated, and we get called pretty much for everything. And Chief, correct me if I'm wrong, but typically this would not be something, if they were to, if this code was in place and they were to get a complaint tonight, Typically, that's not going to be a citation. No, right? They're, they're going to talk and try to approach. mitigate it and get yeah. neighbors. And it would be an ongoing issue before that's they'd be likely to pursue this. So we, we, we don't go out and charge her off the bat. We, we like I said, we try to get compliance. Is our first. That's 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 easiest for us as well. Because um, then we have to start documenting how many times we heard it run, officers' time. So we want we just want to resolve. And now we have something we can stand with. Council, what's your pleasure? Right, I'll move that uh, the town council adopts the code amendment to chapter 58-5, loud, disturbing, and unreasonable noise as presented. As amended, as amended, if you don't as amended. Thank you. I'll second that. Any more discussion? Daniel? Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Sowers? No. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lillard? Yes. Okay, I do want to announce we have turned the air conditioning on. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have to make a motion for it. Well, second? No. <laughs> uh, Mr. Burke, AED donation. Uh, yes, sir. Council is requested to consider a request from the Main Street Baptist Church for the donation of operable used automat automated external defibrillators, AEDs, for their use at the church. The town has standardized our AED equipment to the Phillips brand to be consistent throughout our buildings and we have some of the older equipment in our basement. Uh, the estimated value for two operable AEDs and additional AEDs for parts would be approximately $300. I'll just have just two questions on this. Um, number one is, is there any need or any use for these at any park type locations such as up at the lake right are we in good shape as far as facilities that are not close to and I mean I know that's pretty much filled in all the spots we need as far as I'm aware not talking to Joey okay so, yeah. and then the second thing I had is when I look at this I'm not opposed to this at all I'm just looking at town's liability I assume there would be something uh, included with this donation a, a document that we are not responsible for mm -hmm. their training their use whatever I mean we're providing a piece of equipment that does require training um, and but I wouldn't want the town to be assuming any type of liability as to how this piece of equipment functions or to how it's handled stored or the use of it in the future as far as the the training of those to receive it I'll defer uh, to yeah. Yeah, thank we, you, Jason. we can provide a document with it specifying that the donation is being made as is without any warranties of any kind Don't they have a certain life anyway? I mean, yeah, not, I spoke to the pastor friend. today about that. That same when he brought up, I said, "Hey, I don't know, y'all have to use it, so we're not responsible." So he's on he's on agreement with that. Um, yeah, they, yeah they, battery life is usually the issue, or the new one when it comes out. Um, so I don't know how long it lasts, but we do have extra ones that do work. Anybody else in discussion? But nobody else has asked for these, right? There's not a. I guess, I don't know. Well, it doesn't well, sound like it. Given some, I think, to the shopping centers, maybe, grocery, uh, I think a, grocery, a couple of grocery stores in the past. This is prior to me finding this and have them in there that was left over. I don't know where they came from. But, uh, so, okay, as far as going through this formality, it's the first I'm aware of this. Okay. Well, Mayor, I'm ready to make a motion that the town council approves the donation to two operable AEDs and two inoperable AEDs to the Main Street Baptist Church as presented. Second that. Any more discussion? Danielle? Mr. 
Mr. Yes. Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lillard? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. All right. Code Amendment, Chapter 518, Short-Term Rental Regulations Referral referral to, I guess, Planning Commission. Mr. Burke? Uh, yes, sir. Council is requested to consider referral of a code amendment to Chapter 518, Short-Term Rental Regulations to the Planning Commission for review and development. Following our discussion about short-term rentals, Council had indicated a desire to further define the expectations of short-term rental units in the town. Working with the town attorney, we have developed a draft that we would like to present to the Planning Commission, get their input and, and, and work through them so that we can return to you for your consideration. Council, any questions? Well, I like the idea we want to turn it over to the Planning Commission so they can give us their opinion. I don't have any problem with it. Mayor, I have a motion. Okay. I move the Town Council refer review and development of the code amendment Chapter 518 short term rental regulations to the Planning Commission as presented. I'll second. Great. Any more discussion? Daniel? Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lillard? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Peck? Yes. Um, now we're on to Code Amendment Article 6. <laughs> I forgot my Roman numerals. Is it 6? <laughs> Transient occupancy tax, Mr. Burke? Uh, yes, sir. Council's requested. Uh, to approve and adopt the code amendment to town code chapter 78 taxation article 6 transportation occupation occupancy tax as developed by the town attorney and town treasurer to simplify our code and to update it to comply with current state code uh, the due dates and reporting requirements for property owners and or the intermediary uh, have been also updated I just had a question. Is Airbnb considered an intermediary or that's just a service that facilitates a transaction? They are an intermediary. They are? Yes. And all such. So are there any of the Airbnb um, types that are not, are I, no longer going to be in compliance with our? Well, we, we're, part of the reason behind the ordinance is, is the reporting requirement, um, mm -hmm. the detailed reporting. Um, Airbnb is the last one to come on board and begin remitting the tax. Okay, so all the other ones were already doing that. And, yes. And, okay. Yeah, they're the last one to come on board. And ultimately, it, it the reporting requirement goes to the operator of the short-term rental. If the intermediary uh, elects to, col to to collect and remit the uh, TOT tax funds to the town, then the owner does not have to. But the owner still is required to provide Danielle with a monthly monthly statement of. Mm -hmm how many people have stayed there, how much revenue, so that she's better able to review what is we're receiving Correct. from intermediaries versus uh, what the owner says we should be getting. Okay. My apologies if we've already asked, but we have a standardized form for that? Yes. For do. the reporting? Yes. Do we need a motion or do I already get a motion? We need a motion. That was on the other thing, okay. I have a motion. Okay. I move that the Town Council approve and adopt the code amendment to the Town Code Chapter 78 Taxation Article 4 Transient Occupancy Tax as presented. Second that. Discussion? Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Mr. Lillard? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Sowers? Yes. All right. ARPA funds. W. Waste Water Treatment Plant SCADA. Mr. Burke? Uh, yes, sir. Council is requested to consider appropriation of $105,000 of ARPA funding for the upgrade of the SCADA instrumentation and control of the town's water treatment plant, water supply facilities, and water distribution tank systems. Upgrades would allow the town staff to monitor the plant operations at the plant and the distribution system both at the plant and remotely. Uh, the town received proposals from three firms uh, with the lowest responsive uh, bid being from Lord and Company, and Council is requested to consider uh, approval of the bid amount plus a 10% contingency. Alternatively, uh, staff did talk with uh, Blue Ridge Bank. If Council desires to preserve uh, the ARPA funding, this uh, the Blue Ridge Bank has indicated that they that the town can increase the amount of our loan from them to include this funding uh, 
So just to give council a couple of options, uh, ARPA would be simple, but if there's other items that uh, council wants to preserve, we, uh, you do have the option to, to roll that into the, the loan associated with the water meters. Well, I like the ARPA funds for infrastructure. This sounds right on target. It just makes sense to pay for it and not borrow more money. We just wanted to give you the option. I know. I'm just telling you what I'm thinking. I thought we were getting borrowing the money for the water meters from the vendor. We're not. Or no, we're paying the vendor. We're borrowing it from from. from, from uh, no, we're not borrowing. The vendor's not financing us. No, the sir. The okay. Council uh, uh, approved the the loan from the bank as well as authorized ARPA funding to, to cover that cost. Well, this hasn't been allocated. I mean, this, this is what no Correct. Machine. This has not been, this is, this is not an allocated ARPA item. What we got left, oh, Daniel? <laughs> so if we do, um, which we have an agenda item later um, that needs to be included as well, but if we include the 105,000 for the SCADA upgrade, we're looking at a remainder of 420,000. Is that taken to consider? That, that's a little below our anticipated reserve. We've had a lot of ARPA funds, and we spent it wisely, I think. I don't see any reason not to spend it for this. I agree, too, and I'd rather not be paying interest on. Even if it's low prepared. interest. Yeah, I mean, this is something we need to get done, but I'm, I'm not for adding on to a, a total that we're I want to explain to people what the SCADA is because Joey gave me a good explanation the other day, I thought. <laughs> um, SCADA is the equivalent of cell phone communication between the equipment that we have in the field. It, it allows a plant operator to start and stop various processes at our water treatment plant. It allows them to monitor levels in our tanks as well as monitor the operation of any of the pumps at those tanks, or uh, if they they desire, they can uh, override and, and start a pump if they're seeing that a, a tank is at an unreasonable level. Uh, so it, it simply allows our uh, operators greater ability to remotely observe the operations of our water system, as well as to operate it if necessary. Joey could probably do it a lot. No, you better. did great. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. You ready for a motion? Um, I'm ready for a motion, yeah. Well, I move that the town council approves the award of upgrade of the SCADA instrumentation and control for the town's water treatment plant. Uh, supply water supply facilities and the water distribution tank system and authorized use of $105,000 of ARPA funds to fund this upgrade as presented. Seconded. Mr. Mayor, uh, your, your attorney just pointed out to me that, that I forgot to include award to Lord and Company uh, so that we have this specific. So if, if, if council's amenable, I yes. move that town council move, uh, approve the award to Lord and Company Inc of the upgrade. I approved that amendment, sure. Okay. I re-second that. <laughs> re-second that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone discuss third? it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Danielle, another busy night. Yes, it is. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lillard? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Sauer? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. All right, again, ARPA, Police Department Communications Equipment. Mr. Burke? One second. <laughs> okay. Uh, Town Council is requested to consider appropriation of $128,255.03 of ARPA funds for the upgrade of the police department's communication equipment, uh, which includes handheld and vehicle radios to conform to the Page County Emergency Operations Communication Upgrade. Uh, the town had uh, included funding, uh, well, had removed funding for this project from the FY22 23 budget in anticipation of the use of ARPA funding. That's something we got to have. Yes, sir. Well, I don't have any problem with that. So none of this ties into the new county radio system. I mean, is, is it any connection with the county radio system? What? Yes. This 
So the county started two and a half years ago, revamped the entire towers and red radios throughout the county, fire and rescue as well as police. Um, we've been operating now probably the last three weeks with the new system. I mean, yeah, we have to have it. What's our math, Danielle and Arthur? They're getting close to the end. That was included in the number I gave oh, that, you earlier. Oh, that was. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that class is great. <laughs> no, no shock there. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jason, sure. Uh, I move the town council approve the appropriation and authorize the use of $128,255.03 of all the funds to fund this upgrade as presented. Second. All right. Any more discussion? Stephanie. Danielle, excuse me. <laughs> Definitely made the motion. A, yes. This seems like a long meeting. Y'all. Yes. <laughs> okay. We'll get. We'll get oh, yes. through it. Mr. Pettis. Yes. Mr. Sowers. Yes. Mr. Webb. Yes. Mr. Vickers. Yes. 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 Bench placement, Bethany Veeney Memorial. Mr. Burke. Uh, yes, sir. Council's requested to consider a request from Rod Graves for the use of the bench donated to the town by the George Comer family to be placed on property owned by the Luray Caverns near the Singing Tower that is proposed to be the location of a historic marker for Bethany Veeney by the Shenandoah Valley Battlefield Foundation. And uh, Mr. Graves has provided a little bit of information to Council regarding uh, the Foundation's effort towards uh, making this marker at, near the singing tower. Just uh, either way, if you can stand up or come up to the podium, Bob, which we're, our numbers have dwindled, so you can, <laughs> I think we can all hear you. And if I'm not speaking loud enough, just let me know. Um, uh, but if it's all right, it'd be easier to kind of be official. All right, please. Um, this is a this is a project that a lot of us have been working on for a long, long time. Um, you know, close to, for me anyway, close to about, you know, 15 years, <laughs> uh, way overdue. But it just, there wasn't funding and, the, you know, there was lots of, of, of different reasons. But anyway, we're very excited about it. Um, the uh, General Valley Battlefields Foundation, which I've past chairman of and very involved with one of my history organizations, um, uh, it, it's very, it's a really wonderful program that's happened. Uh, it's a, it's a $74,000 uh, uh, or billion dollar grant that is, that is done by the uh, National Park Service and it's awarded all over the country and uh, it's called the Long Road to Freedom Trail and it's all part of the social fabric of the, of the uh, uh, African American experience. Um, during the Civil War. It's a very important, long overdue, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it got established four years ago and then got funded by the uh, by Congress uh, just uh, not too long ago, about uh, two years ago. Uh, it's up and already started. Um, we will be, you know, an early one here. Um, We've worked very hard on this, my wife included. I like to give her credit and, and others here um, that uh, have participated uh, in, in doing this. And they, I was, had the, the honor to meet the uh, descendants of Bethany Vini, who was an African-American slave here in, in this county, and then gained her freedom and, and uh, eventually got to Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, you'll see her... Um, uh, interpretive uh, marker that uh, that the Battlefields Foundation and uh, myself and my wife, rather my, my wife and myself, rather, uh, and others too, uh, have worked with developing this. There's a lot to say, but this is condensed. Uh, it's very important. It's a very good story about a very special person, um, in my opinion. Um, uh, she was something we all ought to aspire to be. Uh, I want to read a letter from uh, her direct descendant um, and, and pretty much the, the sage in the group, I would say, you know, the older uh, ladies that I met and was uh, I met many months ago. She said, Dear Luray Town Council, um, we, the descendants of Bethany V, are honored and grateful for the Luray's recognition of our great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother, placing a marker in the city 
where she lived, worked, and worshipped for many years is a blessing. This lifelong marker will provide memories for family and friends who live and visit Luray, Virginia. We look forward to your approval of placing this significant marker as a part of Luray's history. Thank you so much for your time, effort, and considering this remarkable event. Uh, Banana uh, Kufer, on behalf of Bethany Vini's family. Um, so they're very, very excited about it. Um, we have a, a date set of, uh, in, uh, let's see, May, is it? It's but, but, it's, but it's tentative at this point. It's still not nailed down, but all you all will know about it being May. Uh, but a lot of time and work went into this, uh, really did. And uh, this is a part of this tremendous National Park Service grant. So it's a big deal. It'd be great for the community. And um, Steve had, had offered uh, a bench that he had here if we wanted to develop the Greenway or anything like that. And then um, I got to talking to him about this uh, 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 bench that was donated from the Comer family. And, uh, you know, whatever you all decide is entirely up to you all, how you all, it's you all's gift, or you all receive the gift. So, but uh, he suggested it might be a good, good place for this. Um, this this kind of pocket park will be on our property that we're we're kind of loaning to the to the community uh, for this purpose next to the uh, singing tower the Carillon uh, that my great grandfather built uh, many years ago. So it, it, we feel like it'll be great. It's right there in the African uh, original African American community, and uh, uh, and leaders in that community are very happy about it um, uh, as well so uh, if there's any questions I can answer for you I got one. I always have one yes sir. so what we see is is that gonna be like a permanent marker we see like we have at the competitive memorial one of those yeah there's they're they're all over the state you know different different given to you because we're not using it so you have places yes sir I mean it was just something you offered but we we have we have different you know you know Revolutionary War interpretive plaques and Civil War, and then, you know, like we're going to have down at the Red Wall Furnace, have, you know, those things are natural interpret. Is this basically an interpretation device? Uh, it will have a QR code on it that will, if people want to know more, and they can take a deeper dive into this. Uh, and this is something that we're the Battlefield Foundation is developing for all their interpretive devices, uh, you know, including uh, this one. So um, we're really excited about it, and that's a uh, like I say, it's a great story. If you haven't read our story, it's, it's awesome. It really is. Very inspiring. Any questions for Rod? Thank you, Rod, for being here. Any questions oh, for Oh, thank Rod? you. For, happy to. Oh, just that this is an awesome project. I mean, this is a lot of people talk, and we talk about trying to remember and recognize all of our history. This is very specific local history that needs to be remembered and isn't always. I wish I knew it a lot sooner, and uh, I think it's the least we could do, so I'd like to make the motion. I move that town council approve the loan and use of the bench donated to the town by the George Comer family at the Shenandoah Valley Battlefield Foundation historic site for Bethany Beanie as presented. Second. Any discussion? Danielle. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. West? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lowe? Yes. Yes. Thank you. She awesome. She read the book. It's an interesting read. I mean, yes. What an incredible woman. Yeah, yeah. She is. <laughs> at, at and, that time and then to, to connect with the family is just, it was like a, it's a, it's a very interesting feeling when, when that happens. Hmm. You, know, to, you know, anybody in history, it's just, and I love history, but this is a particular figure that's really important to this town, I think. So, anyway, thank you. Uh, can I make a comment regarding sure. the bench? Certainly, Isabel. Yeah, I can. You go ahead. You, you, you represent. <laughs> so um, I, I just think it's very symbolic, and it just occurred to me that it is actually quite meaningful that the bench came from the Shenandoah National Park because uh, Bethany Vini actually gained the freedom because of what is now the Shenandoah National Park. Mm -hmm. She was working for um, investors in uh, the Stony Man Mining Company mm -hmm. when uh, one of the investors, uh, Mr. Um, George uh, Adams uh, and his family bought their freedom and uh, then she moved with them uh, up north. But it was um, uh, the, the mining
mining company late, later on after the Civil War was bought by um, Pollock. Pollock's family. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that's where Skyrim was. Pollock was from New York. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this place where she lived was right um, near Skyland. So anyway, it's very Yeah, it's very ironic. I mean, yes. had that you know all this kind of time ago, we <laughs> so much of a presence for Shadow National Park here, you know, and you used to work there and had great service there too. So thank you, Owen. Uh, let us know when the dedication or Yes sir, I will. Absolutely. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, immense donations process. Mr. Burke. Actually we've got uh, town councils requested to consider a request from the Rec Center to provide a letter of support for their application for grants to support construction of an inclusive playground at the Restoration Park at the Rec Center. Does this encumber <coughs> us? Is this just a letter of support that we like that they're doing it? Is that yes, sir. Uh, I believe they reached out to Councilwoman Lillard and just indicated a, a, a general letter of support so that they could pr proceed. They weren't specific about who they were applying for, so I think it'd just be a general okay. uh, to whom it concerns. I did request some additional information on that, and she said she would be happy to provide it. I think there are a number of uh, grant opportunities that they're um, researching, but I have not heard back from her. But it was um, Miss Jenna Smith who is volunteering her time on behalf of the rec center. It, seemed like it was a very worthy cause. And I would think it would be better to ask for a letter of recommendation on individual projects rather than just the whole overall project. Am I wrong? I don't know much about grants. Is that well, again, that's kind of, I was hoping that she could get us some more specifics that uh, perhaps we could then in our uh, letter of support specifically address the grant in which she's applying for as opposed to a generic yeah, just letter. A universal so we, letter of yes. support, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Within the motion, it kind of covers that, doesn't it? Because yeah, it, it says authorizes yeah. the mayor to provide yeah. letters. Well, it does, yeah. yeah. But again, it doesn't take long enough for us to work up a letter of support. Yeah. Yeah, the personalization, that's that's good, though. Or, yeah. I think it's another one of those no brainers. I mean, it doesn't cost anything and helps them out. So, no, no discussion, I'd make a motion. I move that town council approve and authorize the mayor to provide letters of support as needed for grant applications for the construction of the inclusive playground at Restoration Park at the Rec Center as presented. Second that. Any discussion? Danielle? Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Lowell? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. All right, events, no, events, <laughs> you're getting to wear a record here. Events donations process. Uh, yes, sir, council is requested to consider a proposed events donation plan for future town events. Our Parks and Rec Department uh, have experienced increased costs associated with music groups and other components of town events, including evenings on Main, the 4th of July celebration, and the Sunflower Festival. In an effort to offset some of these cost increases, staff are proposing to allow the town to accept sponsor donations for specific events. Uh, a sample sponsorship, sponsorship plan has been developed for the evening on main, evenings on main program. Uh, benefits of, of being a benefactor would include recognition on uh, an event advertisement, both digital and print, inclusion on a new events sponsor page on the town's website, recognition at events, and booth space at events. Uh, in addition, staff have worked with the uh, PACA and other groups associated with the Sunflower Festival and would propose to charge a $5 per vehicle entry fee for the Sunflower Festival in September. Council? Yeah, I think this is a great idea. I applaud Jen and her team for their creativity and uh, research on developing something that I think is very practical and feasible. And particularly given, um, just speaking to the, the fee uh, for the Sunflower Festival, I think $5 uh, per vehicle is very reasonable and you know, we talked last year when uh, Jen came in to talk to us about her budget and the needs and uh, there was a lot of discussion around the expense and operation and lack of capacity and also um, the challenge with her department to generate revenue and I think we tasked her at the end of that meeting with uh, looking at other options for generating revenues and uh, and so here we are with this proposal and 
again, well, I think. This this one, the, it's the parking lot at the Ralph Dean, right? That it make it relatively easy to collect the five dollars. So there's no extra lots of work for y'all to get. No, there's some logistical things that we're working through okay. to um, see what options would be available in partnering with PACA. And we've also had a discussion with Danielle to see if we could get a card reader, you know, just to provide ease and to facilitate that transaction. Um, that is an event at one park that is self-contained. I personally am not a huge proponent of, um, of charging fees, particularly wristbands for children activities. It is my goal. Um, to always make our events um, free as much as possible, but we do realize uh, the need and importance for us to do some, um, you know, revenue recovery, and this seems to us to be some low-hanging fruit. It also benefits our sponsors and gets their, um, their, their name associated with a lot of our really popular events. Uh, and, uh, yeah, like Steve mentioned, we, we met with PACA, we discussed that with the event partners, and they completely understood where we were uh, in regards to increasing costs over the past few years. Uh, so it's, it's not something that we took lightly. We did, we did discuss whether we thought we would uh, you know, lose visitors and attendees at that event, and it was discussed uh, you know, that many of our other local and regional events have much higher entry fees and on a per person basis. So uh, we're open to suggestions. And, and the fee is, is specific to the day where the town has a number of exhibits and, and activities that the town uh, has paid for, the, uh, the animals, the, the, the butterfly uh, facility, different things like that. PACA has indicated that typically the day after that, the, the Sunday after the Sunflower Festival, they are still there uh, and clipping uh, sunflowers. So if someone wasn't interested in all of the extra family activities that Jennifer and her staff provide, they can come the following day at no fee, uh, except for the donation to PACA if they still want to pick up some, some wonderful sunflowers and other, other plantings. I wanted to thank you all for all the additional information that you sent, because I, I shared your feeling about the charging, but you sent a very exhaustive breakdown and just out of appreciation for all the work you all do stretching a budget, it makes a lot of sense. and. I do think, I know this is a line to have to kind of balance, but if you work into your materials that on Sunday, if you're just interested in viewing and clipping, that people can come without the fee, just not the activities. I think that would be valuable to include in all your information, but I, I think it makes sense. Sure, we appreciate the question too as well. Um, anytime, you know, I think I've mentioned this before, our office door is always open. Feel free to share our cell phone numbers if you run into a situation where you're not really sure maybe you're speaking to a resident or someone in the county or a visitor feel free at any time to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to provide you with additional information thank you yeah i think we ran into this or we tried something like this before would we allow political ads like as a sponsor for the Look at Jackie. Jackie. <laughs> I think she's on to something. <laughs> well, I think that's what we got into. We had an issue before, didn't we? But well, if council wants to put a $10,000 political uh, <laughs> level, we could we could definitely consider that. <laughs> yeah. we, might get it. we might get it this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's something we ought to decide before we get into it and maybe not leave it in Jen's hands. Yeah, that's, I, a, that's a I good agree. question. That's a, that's a very valid point. Uh, my preference would be to avoid um, any sponsorships that were uh, – political in nature and to focus on our partnering business groups which could benefit from um, you know having their recognition and uh, promotion at our events if council desired as, as far as the motion would if you would uh, consider the I, I move town council approve the proposed events donation sponsorship plan for local businesses only and the entry fee that would give us the ability to, to um, exclude any Political. There, there, there could be uh, potential constitutional implications of, of uh, putting that speech restriction. I have not looked at that in the context of uh, our local government selling sponsorships for public events. Uh, so I can't can't speak to it here uh, on the fly, but that may be something that's worth looking into before you impose that restriction. You you also worry about the impact of you know having the sponsor name and then 
now people are so partisan that somebody might act and say, well, I'll just skip the town concert because it's got the people I don't like's name on it. So I'm proudly anti-politics in this situation. So. Yeah, if, if it passes the legal test, I am as well. And uh, I think that you know, we tend to look at it through the lens of the town, but then I'm also thinking about the performers or whoever it is that is the entertainment that night. They may not be as comfortable depending on where that may go as well. So uh, it, it, do we have to, should we table this until we find out? Um, it sounds like we should, and you let Jason give us an opinion. That'll yes. Uh, yes, sir. I yeah. appreciate that. Well, if if, if council can, would consider just not the approve the 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 sponsors sponsorship plan, but um, uh, approve the entry fee, entry that way fee. Jennifer can start right. proceeding with with development of of that advertising. Did you have a question? I did have a question. Um, we had also reached out to Standout Arts to discuss the uh, potential of creating a sponsorship page associated with the town's website that could house uh, logos and potentially links to our event sponsorships, uh, sponsors, as well as any other grant funding sources uh, that other departments may receive. Uh, Shannon indicated that we are still paying for her services in part, and so that is something that would still be covered underneath their contract. So I had I had a discussion with Steve, and we really weren't sure what councils feel was about having the sponsorship page with local businesses uh, and you know primarily for our higher end sponsors to be able to maybe have a link to their website yes yeah, so she had kind of put like a little placeholder uh, for us to review we'd be happy to share that link so you can kind of see what that would look like as we get into this and of course uh, we now have the editing <coughs> capabilities for our website this website would be something that we could manage in-house and as sponsorships change over the years we could then uh, update that uh, year to year based on various events but we were not sure <coughs> what council's opinion was on having that on the town's website of course it's not on the front page it would be housed in a specific sponsorship uh, tab or web uh, associated page so if, if that's something that you would like to discuss further or if you're okay with that that's something we could pursue more with shannon some of this is time sensitive as uh you know we obviously take a pause before it's approved but it would give us some indication as to whether over the next month we should pursue further development of the flyers and uh, flushing out of those smaller details so this would be a unique page on our website sponsor yes, page yes, could it not could we not have the sponsors on the page of events well the plan would be the, uh, similar to what we do for the movies on main where you have you know, the the movies on main and the individual movie and then we have the sponsor that would be something that we would include for the individual <coughs> events but uh, the, the 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 hope is is that the um, level of sponsorship would include additional items um, you know, for the, the the lower sponsorship you'd get your name on the individual event uh, any of the advertising for that um, well it sounds to me like this will make it easier to get sponsors for events which is pretty critical for, for us if I knew I was gonna get my name certain places than I would otherwise I'd be more willing to sponsor it I yes think. sir and so I if, if if, if council would prefer us to have it linked to the event we can we can do that but as jennifer indicated if we have this specific page it allows the town to not only incorporate things for parks and rec but if there there was a, a business that donated to the police department for uh different items for you know, a, a, a bulletproof vest for for boone things of that nature it just gives us the opportunity to recognize the the folks that are contributing to to all of our departments. Yeah. Well, what are you thinking, Joey? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I can see it all over your face. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about um, the town having the preferential business marketing things on our webpage. I, I like it. I like the idea. But I'm kind of because I think I've uh, passed LDI events, so it's like the chicken chow down sponsored by. Bu 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 bu. That's one thing, but then it's like the town of Loray sponsored by. It's almost like a, uh, it's it's a, it's a tension there, and it's hard to get the right balance for me. If that makes sense, you don't want 
Tunnel Ray, uh, sponsored by Pepsi Cola. Yeah. Right, and I think that's I think that's why we had it on a separate page in itself. Uh, and so I get that. Would yeah. Have to okay. there it was one of the options that we were looking at when we thought about what would make uh, a sponsor enter, what could they get out of it, right? And so we did some research into other, actually, band sponsorships and what they look like, which is why it's on there and certainly up for council's consideration and whatever direction you give is the direction that we'll go in. Um, but it was just, you know, we were trying to look at those options. But like it says, evenings on Main sponsored by Joey Sowers Incorporated. Would you have a problem with that? <clears throat> yes, I think that has a big difference to me. It almost, it's very distinctly different, isn't it? It's right. like it's this right. this thing sponsored by, when it's on the town's webpage, it just, or brought I guess you're kind of doing the same thing. It really just comes down to how it's how it's framed. Well, and I think and your it note. Could be framed with, you know, brought to you by Joey Sowers Incorporated. And the note on the website. Yeah, I know. The caption on the website specifically, I mean, that addresses that concern for me, which is, you know, thank you sponsors for supporting Town of Lou Ray events. Your support makes a difference within our community. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, we got the racing jacket on as the Town of Lou Ray, and we've got Pepsi. Yeah, T yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and if anybody feels bad about not being able to be included as a sponsor. Always next year, right? Yeah. <laughs> and Jason, you don't have any, you don't see any issues with this or any conflicting things, or do you? That's something I, I wouldn't mind also having a look at. Because okay. we also don't want, like, <laughs> if it's a free speech issue and then all of a sudden we have this big sponsor that comes in that we... Can we turn down sponsorships? That's the question I'm thinking right now. Jason can look into that and come back and tell us what we could and couldn't do. Have we had any sponsorships we've turned down? We've never really pursued sponsorships for our events. Now, we have event partners and sponsors mm -hmm. like LBI, Patriotic Arts Council, Page County Farmers Association. Um, but to my knowledge, uh, we've never pursued sponsorships for these events. I think it's a great idea, by the way. I really do. I, yeah. I love that you guys are trying to do this. As we work out the, <laughs> the kinks here, as far as on the legal yeah. side, I want to thank you for. for just thinking outside the box and trying to come up with some ideas. And, and as you had said, that's what we had asked for a year ago. It's like, hey, how can we help offset the cost of some of these? Because we don't want this to stop. Uh, yeah. And even tonight, we're talking about additions to the Greenway, all this, which we just, I mean, all these things are coming with maintenance and long term costs that we need to be thinking now how we're going to continue to, to keep it all going. Sure, so our events have, have grown tremendously just in the past few years. Yes. Uh, the wonderful things that we're hearing about Sunflower Festival. I did have just one other thing going back to the Sunflower Festival. You don't you don't foresee too big of a bottleneck on the way in, or are you going to have like a, a way to stage vehicles inside the lot and then they can turn around? Yeah, we, we discussed that briefly as well. I think there's um, as you enter the gate, there's the option of of having two entrance lanes, one straight on and the other making a right into the parking lot. It leaves the exit open. Uh, logistically, we would just have to put together a plan for as to staffing, uh, what that looks like, how to direct traffic efficiently. It does add another component to this, obviously, um, so that it is something that we've discussed. Uh, so hopefully we can we can figure out a quick and easy way to, to process those and collect those payments. But you feel confident that you can find a good solution for that where it's not going to be some kind of... I, I think so. I, I'm not going to tell you that it's not going to be a bottleneck. Yeah. Uh, if you were there last year, it was the traffic was backed up a little uh -huh. more collecting. Uh, but we were directing folks into appropriate parking areas. So um, I have complete uh, confidence and faith in, in my staff and PACA and the volunteers and our partners. Uh, and, and I think we can pull it off. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? So we can table that until the next two. We get well, can we approve no, the well, yeah, we can approve the right. Five dollar fee for the sunflower, so they can go forward. Um, I, I, I move so. that we approve a five dollar parking fee for the sunflower festival. Second that. Discussion. Now, us tabling the sponsorship situation that 
that isn't going to meaningfully hold you all up as you get into the spring and try to. Absolutely not. That's okay. just the detail that we would add to that sponsorship package gotcha. to continue to develop um, that program until we get back to the end of the year. I'll flip the We'll have some resolution. <laughs> yeah. I think the prices are very reasonable. I mean, yeah. these will be the prices for all the bands. I mean, what for sponsorship? It, uh, but no matter the, how much a band, I mean, the bands have different costs, right? But this will be. Uh, this the, the, the this is simply to offset some of the increases in in the bands. No, sir. The five hundred dollars unfortunately does not cover the, yeah. the 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 full cost of, of of entertainment these days. But I would be the full sponsor for five hundred dollars. Is that right? You would be the only sponsor for five hundred dollars, and and yes, there are certain costs associated with various bands, but we've allowed that sponsor to choose whatever concert interest them the most. Yeah. I think with those prices, I don't think you have any problem at all. I think mm -hmm. people will jump at it. Okay. <coughs> so we need to vote on the um, $5 fee. Okay. 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 No more discussion. All right, Danielle. Mr. Sowers? Yes. Mr. Webb? Yes. Mr. Vickers? Yes. Ms. Muller? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Pettit? Yes. yes. All right. Accounting services renewal. Yeah, council is requested to consider approval and award of the continued accounting services to the town treasurer by Mary Kay Earhart PLLC for the FY22-23 budget. Ms. Earhart's firm has assisted the town with the financial review and report preparation for the previous fiscal year's budgets. Uh, the estimated cost of service is anticipated to be less than $19,000 and will be incorporated into your FY23-24 budget. Is that compared to last year, Steve? Has there been an increase? Or? There has been a, a slight increase, uh, a couple thousand, I believe. I can double check that figure tomorrow, but it, yeah, it, it, it's in that neighborhood. Um, and again, it's 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 a roundabout uh, cost because uh, it, it all depends on the, the volume of, of material that they have to to. And uh, part of that increase has been reviewing the the ARPA funds because that significantly did increase the town's budget and the amount of, of effort that Ms. Earhart's company has to assist uh, Danielle with. And she also indicated that a large part of the um, additional cost is retention of staff. Council, any questions toward Danielle or Steve, I guess? I think it's a necessary expense, right? We can get around. All right. I move that the town council award the professional service contract for accounting services to Mary Kay Earhart PLLC in the amount not to exceed nineteen thousand as presented. I further move to authorize the town treasurer to execute all contracts necessary for these services. Second. Second. Discussion. Danielle. Mr. West. Yes. Mr. Vickers. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. Mr. Pettit. Yes. Mr. Sowers. Yes. All right, Mr. Buck, did you have anything for us? Well, we've got the, if, if council wants to consider adding the, the, all, all the order of business that was added to your agenda at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, council's requested to consider adoption of a code amendment to chapter two, uh, section 54, order of business to adjust the agenda for regular town council meetings to include an agenda item Council response following the council, the citizen comments. Uh, citizen comments are intended for citizens to express concerns about town issues exclusive it of items to be discussed during public hearings uh, at the regular council meetings. And council is to not provide responses during citizen comments. The citizen response section would allow town council to respond with a statement of specific factual information or recite the town's existing policy on an issue direct that person to make inquiry or to visit the town staff about that issue or to offer to place that item on a future council agenda. All right. Need a motion? I move the town council adopt the code amendment to chapter 2-54 order of business as presented to provide council the opportunity to response to respond to citizen comments. Second that. All right. Any discussion? Danielle? Mr. 
Yes. 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 All right, now we finished. Okay. <laughs> now, Mr. Bob, did you have anything for us? I don't have anything this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any council okay. comments? It was the nice seeing the, all the seats full this yes, evening. Yes, thank you all for being here, and thank you for sticking with us all night. This has been um, Mayor's announcements. Uh, I guess the polar plunge is this Saturday. I'm sure we're all signed up for that. If you haven't, it's probably not too late. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, even if you can't, I'm sure none of us are going to do it, but it's good to go up there and support them. Uh, uh, and again, at the uh, at the joint town council meeting, I forgot to mention this. I think the, the county is rolling out their new website on February 23rd. Wasn't it, Steve? Yes, sir. Four, 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 Thursday. Thursday, and it's four to six. And I asked them, there's going to be like a presentation at 4:30. I think they said. So I haven't seen that anywhere else. Have y'all? Yeah, we got an email invite. We did. Okay. I got one from Steve. Oh, okay. Well, oh, that's Steve. working. Okay. I missed stuff. Okay. All right, that's all I have. <laughs> All right, well, pretty good.